On this mileage unknown, we're going to take a closer look at one of the newest project cars in the fleet. We haven't done any videos for a while because the only car I've been working on is Poopy. It's torn apart in the driveway and uh, I'm about ready to tow it over to Travis's house so he can help me with the electrical stuff. Trav doesn't like working on the US cars near as much as the German cars. So we're gonna take a little bit closer look at the 69 Carmen Ghia that we picked up. And I've been collecting a whole bunch of parts. We're gonna take a look at the parts to see if we think we have enough stuff to actually put this together. So this is the 69 Ghia that we picked up just a month or so ago. And we haven't done much with it just yet because we need to collect a whole bunch of parts. So something kind of weird with this car is at one point it was converted to an electric motor car and that's part of what we have to actually fix on this thing. Don't mind the dog barking, that's not us. <laughs> so if we come back to the engine compartment here, you can see somebody did a bit of a hack job cutting out the rear engine tin for an electric motor. Not only that, the, the clutch fork has actually been cut and I'm sure there's gonna be more and more stuff that we find as we go along. There's probably a couple extra holes in the firewall that shouldn't be there. And when you come up to, I don't even remember how to open the hood on this car. I think it's over here somewhere. See if I can open the hood. Ooh. When you get under the hood, we've got a brand new gas tank sitting there because at some point when it was an electric conversion, somebody actually cut the original gas tank in half, left the bottom half there just as a support for batteries. You can see we've got some extra relays and wiring going on. That's where travel come into play. He's a little bit better with the wiring than I am. So we'll see how that goes. We also have um, a fuel pipe that we got to put back in and a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to take a look at some of the parts we've collected already in hopes that maybe we've got enough stuff. Luckily the car came with a new tank and a sending unit, so we didn't have to worry about that. All right. So a couple of the first pieces we got actually came from MNT Manufacturing, and there's some of the sheet metal pieces. We have the main piece to replace that cut up section. And then this is actually the battery tray section. Now on MNT's site, it said that one of the corners needed to be modified a little bit. So it might be interesting there. We got this piece mainly because the battery here had eaten through the engine compartment. So we got to do a little repair there. I've also heard of people actually relocating the battery on the Ghia from the back in the engine compartment here to under the seat. So maybe that's something we'll take a look at too, if, if it'll fit under the seat. So I will say, Neither, in tra neither Trav or I have much uh, welding experience, so this could get interesting. I do have a welder. I might have one of my buddies come over and uh, give us some pointers and see how that goes, but you know, it could be fun. So this, if you have a, if you have a Volkswagen apart that you're cleaning up the engine compartment. These ones come from Christopher Valone, which he also has a YouTube channel, I believe. But these are some of the nicer sound deadening pieces that I've seen because they have that cool waffle board look to them instead of just being the standard like cardboard sound deadening. So these look really nice. We'll help clean up the engine compartment once we get to that point and just in case 
that's where it's from. <laughs> I'll put a link to his website below because we actually put that same in Trav's 55, I believe, Pops 56, and now it'll be going in the 69 Geo when we get there. Okay, some of the other stuff we got. That's a battery pad to go right there, so hopefully we don't have that issue anymore. The fuel tank was missing the little fuel drain, which I did notice, guys, this was a pretty cheap package. The filter is broken in the package. So that's one thing we're gonna get again. I, obviously we needed the main hard parts anyway, but I'm gonna get one of the metal filters instead of the this plastic filter, cause don't know if you can see, but it's actually broken in there. So I've got to get a different filter. Yeah, there's a little piece hanging down at the bottom. I know. I just noticed that the other day. Why do we have heat tubes? Well, the engine has everything for the heater to still work. The fan shroud will take some heat tubes. So we'll get those on there. Shannon enjoys heater, so the heater might actually function in this car at some point. I did get new positive cable and a new negative cable just because we don't know what's there. I did notice that uh, we're missing a starter, so I've got to get a starter for the car. The engine maybe we'll take a look at before the video is over, but I got a throttle cable tube for the engine. This is actually the seal for the fuel filler. At some point, there's a whole bunch of extra holes drilled in here. I'm guessing when it was converted to electric, the guy used this for his plug port. So we've got some extra holes. Unfortunately, we're probably not gonna do anything with that. <laughs> but this is the seal that will hold the fuel filler neck in there. And hey, you won't really see any of it. We've got to go up through the fender to get that under the hood where it needs to be. So we also have the fuel pipe, which for some reason, every website showed these little things as being part of the fuel pipe seal somehow, which these are pretty small. So I don't know if these are supposed to stretch over the pipe and help seal better there. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> so even with all the crazy amounts of engine tin Travis and I have, the engine was missing the back tin with the, the part for the doghouse for the oil cooler, which the engine was also missing the doghouse. So that'll go on the back of the fan shroud, cover up the, the cooler, and that will direct air like that. So we were missing a couple pieces of tin, had to get those, probably could have found them at a swap meet, but we wanted to start get going on some of this stuff. And honestly, some of those pieces of tin, pretty cheap. We also got a different back tin all the ones that we had had the third hole in them. I wanted to just clean it up a little bit so we only had the two holes for the heater tubes. Got a new clutch kit. There is a clutch on the car or on the motor, but who knows how old that clutch is. The motor's out. Might as well put a clutch in it, right? We got engine compartment seals for once we get the tin all fixed and around the front of the motor. Those were seals for the doghouse. That's a muffler installation kit. The engine came with what looks to be probably a pretty much brand new muffler that was installed at some point. They took it off when they pulled the motor. We're going to need to seal that back up. Can never have enough engine tin screws, right? Seems like those always disappear somewhere. That 
that was the rear seal. One of those seals is for the actual deck lid. So we have a seal for front of the motor, back of the motor, and the deck lid. New clutch cable and wing nut, because we're there, right? We got a new Bowden tube for the cable. New engine and trans mounts. All right. Now, when we were looking at the transmission and saw that the throw out bearing forks had been cut off, that's this here. So we needed a new throw out bearing fork in the rebuild kit, which is all something I had to do on Penelope that sucked. It was a giant pain in the butt because I could not get the spring to actually go where it needed to. Luckily, I was able to reuse the old spring and it seems to be working, but we needed all the new bushings and everything to do that. So we're going to have to figure out the spring. Yeah, spring might get interesting. Um, Don't look at me like that. <laughs> also, good thing we got another set of hands. Right? Maybe somebody doesn't get so frustrated. <laughs> also got just the <laughs> throttle cable, barrel and, and bolt, because I'm sure that's missing. And it'd be our luck. We would be all done running around trying to find some stupid little thing like that that would stop us from starting the, the car. And then I got a new half moon starter bolt because I'm not sure where that is for the car. We saw that the starter was missing. So definitely something we need. That's all the stuff we've picked up so far. And of course, being a project, there's gonna be more because we notice it needs a starter. Obviously we need a battery. And then it, then we can kind of get the fuel tank together, get the sheet metal worked out, get the engine in and see what does or doesn't work. Cause some of the wiring might get a little interesting just because it was converted to electric at some point. Action. <laughs> so one more thing I forgot to mention is this car came with no keys. When it was an electric car, the guy had an on off toggle switch or some, some contraption. There's a big giant red button screwed into the dash where one of the gauges once were, which we have the gauges, so that would be okay. But we're hoping we can actually remove one of the door handles and maybe, just maybe, there's a key code on the lock cylinder. Now, because the car's clearly been apart a couple times, will this lock cylinder match the ignition cylinder, match the other door cylinder? That I don't know. So, and I don't know if you can actually see it without pulling it apart further than what we have here on the handle. So I'm probably just gonna take the handle with me to work and maybe try and get it over to a locksmith or take it apart to see if you can see a code. I know on some of the cylinders, some of the ignition cylinders, they'll have the type of key, whether it's a Y, S, T, whatever, and then like a three or four digit code, which would be the key code. So that's what we're hoping for. I'm going to, I'm gonna put this screw somewhere where we screw. won't lose it, but put it back in the handle. That's a good, that's a good uh, plan right there. Good Trav job, says, Trav. put it back in the handle. So that's what we're going to do. So smart. <laughs> All right. So this is the engine that came with our 69 Carmen Ghia. Like I said, the muffler system actually looks like it was probably put on fairly soon before it was actually pulled out of the car. The engine itself appears to be a fairly stock 1600 dual port and it looks pretty clean. From underneath, there wasn't tons of oil, you know, leaks or anything like that from what we could see. We don't know how long it sat, but we're gonna clean it up and we will be putting it in the car and seeing what happens more than, we're not gonna take it all apart and rebuild it before it goes into the car. If it goes into the car and runs and drives good, we're gonna call it a day. If you come around to this side, you can see a couple of the things I was talking about on the engine tin. So there's, there's a piece of the front tin 
that doesn't have that hole for the doghouse cooler. You can see that right now that it's missing that piece that covers up the rest of the oil cooler and directs the air out the motor there. You can also see, like I said, it has a clutch, but uh, I seriously doubt we're reusing whatever we got going on there. Everything else looks actually super complete and pretty much like we're gonna put it in the car and it's gonna fire right up to life, right? That's how it goes. Well, that's gonna be it for this mileage unknown. That was a quick project update. Maybe it was a quick project update on our 69 Gear, and hopefully you guys stay tuned for more car shenanigans.